Welcome to our online information session for the Weatherhead School of Management, hosted by Assistant Dean Jim Hurley and Assistant Dean Tiffany Welch. My name is Michael Mason. I am the Assistant Dean for First Year Students, and I'll be taking your questions via email to be answered live on air. If you have a question, please send it to summeredgehelp at case.edu with the subject line info session. If we do not answer your question live, we will follow up with you via email shortly. Now to your hosts, Jim Hurley and Tiffany Welch. Um, good, evening, excuse me, good evening, everyone. Um, I am not Tiffany Welch, I am Jim Hurley. It's my pleasure to welcome you tonight. Um, Tiffany and I are professional advisors, um, but on-air personalities, not so much. Um, but uh, I can assure you that this will be the best of the online registration seminars that you will, that, that, that you could sit in on. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in. And uh, again, most importantly, just want to, to, to welcome you. That's our, our motto in, in Weatherhead. Um, so we're gonna jump in. We're, we're not going to uh, commit death by PowerPoint, but we do have some slides we'll go through. And um, I'm gonna go with the first slide. I think I'm looking at the right camera. Um, so our objectives tonight, we're going to introduce you to our group in Weatherhead, our undergraduate student services group. We are um, special in Weatherhead the way we do things and Tiffany's gonna talk more about that so I don't wanna steal too much of her thunder. Um, of course, discuss key information and considerations for scheduling, especially those that are unique to Weatherhead. Um, provide course recommendations and options, obviously that's why you're tuning in. Um, we'll address some, some FAQs and also take some individual questions um, that, uh, that you'll, you'll be able to send in through email, I believe. Michael will, or Dean Mason will prompt you. Um, and lastly, um, give contact information for follow-up. I just want to take another minute on that one um, because we, uh, we recognize that you're all going to be in first seminars with instructors who are tremendous instructors and probably very committed as, as advisors and very resourceful. Um, and many of them will refer you to us. And, but if you don't get referred to us, we hope that, that you will come see us um, when you have questions as you're navigating first semester and thinking about majors. Um, we hope that we'll see you at, uh, at some events this fall. Um, this is the second year of doing the summer online sessions. We really miss the in-person sessions of the old days, um, but uh, try not to hang on to that too much, um, but really hope that we will uh, meet uh, many of you in person this coming fall. So I think we'll go to Tiffany next. Okay, so Weatherhead Undergrad Student Services. Um, as Jim mentioned, we're a little bit unique in that we have professional advisors. Uh, we meet with our advisees every semester before registration and, and then of course throughout the semester as needed. Um, but you're still welcome to speak with faculty. We sort of use our faculty more as maybe career mentors. Um, if you have questions about professions or specific companies that the instructors or professors may know about. Um, and we try to be a bit of a one-stop shop, I would say. Um, try to manage all of your questions so you don't have to run all over campus, but there are certain things that you'll go to undergrad studies for as opposed to us, but um, as it says here, majors, minors, course approvals, declarations, transfer credit, we do it all, um, permits for classes, um, or just talking about your schedule and what your schedule may look like for the next few years. Um, and then we also do educational, professional, and social programming. Um, the student groups, we have several student groups within Weatherhead and many of their events are coordinated through our office. Uh, we also do social programming. Um, have any examples of different programs? Um, some some stress relievers around exams yeah, and the holidays. Yeah. Lots of food, providing food and <laughs> snacks for students. Chipotle. Yes. It's always a big draw. Yes. Um, but one that we especially want to highlight is our welcome and ice cream social. It's Friday, August 23rd at 4 p.m. in the Peter B. Lewis building. And you'll all receive an email invitation in case you forget. But please join us. Come learn about Weatherhead. Speak with us in person. We encourage you all to attend. 
It's your turn to advance the slide. Okay. <laughs> okay, so some considerations as you're thinking about and formulating your schedule. Um, first and foremost, our programs are, are very flexible. Um, not that there aren't, uh, of course, specific requirements that you have to satisfy, but um, there, there aren't um, many cases where you need semester after semester of semester of sequence courses and lots of prereqs for different courses. Um, hand in hand with that, um, it is impossible to get behind in first year in terms of specific requirements. Um, if you are thinking about um, a variety of different options, combining different majors and minors, it, it is literally impossible to get behind. Um, there's nothing that you absolutely have to take first semester, second semester. Um, again, we're going to give you some recommendations and um, ideally the, that you, you'll get the courses that you want in the fall. Um, we'll, we'll give you plan B courses in case things um, get tight with some of our enrollments, but lots of flexibility. It's impossible to, to get behind. Um, so we're going to be looking at a schedule of um, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. So my third bullet. So you need a, a pace of about 15 credits a semester to graduate in four years. Our programs uh, in Weatherhead are 120 to 122 credits, depending on the program. Um, so a course load of 14 to 17 credits um, is what's recommended during the first semester. So about four or five courses is what we're going to be looking at. And so what are our programs? Um, we have four majors, um, a BS in accounting, a BS in management with a major in finance or a major in marketing, and then the BA in economics. I don't know if you wanted me to go into any more detail on those. That's fine, I think. Okay. We'll see if they have <laughs> questions. <laughs> and then we have, as you can see, a slate of minors, accounting, business management, economics, entrepreneurial studies, finance and marketing. And I do want to mention the business management minor is for non-business students. Um, it's more of an overview for engineering students, nursing students. Uh, it's open to anyone on campus besides business students. Okay. And, uh and a last comment about the business management minor. It's only two years old and it has quickly become, along with economics, um, one of our most popular minors um, for students outside of the business major. So a closer look then at the majors. Um, whether you are considering a major in accounting or finance or marketing, and you don't have to know which direction you might be headed yet, and we'll, we'll cover, excuse me, we'll cover economics separately, and then the, of course we have a slide for that. Um, but right now I'm talking about um, schedule recommendations for students who are pretty sure that they are going to major in a true business discipline, accounting, finance, or marketing. Um, so everyone is going to have their first seminar. And then you'll have a math course. Uh, two semesters of calculus are required, so you're looking at calculus one or pre-calculus, depending on your on your background coming into school. Um, maybe you've AP'd through Calc one. You can look at Calc two. You can postpone Calc two to the spring. Um, and if you've AP'd through two calculuses, that's a beautiful thing. We can talk about other options also. Um, accounting 101, which is financial accounting. Um, it, Again, if you're pretty sure you're going to study business, great course to have first semester. And then Economics 102 um, is the intro uh, microeconomics course, and Econ 103 is macroecon. Either of those would be fine. Uh, slight preference to have uh, Economics 102 microeconomics during first, first semester. Um, so that four course schedule, if my math is right, would give you 14 credits. With the, two, with the Calc 1 and University Seminar, I'm, I'm sorry, first seminar, each carrying four credits. Um, and there's, there's nothing wrong, that's a fine schedule. If you wanted to take a fifth course, you could look at some of your, what we call the gen eds, your general education requirements, your breadth requirements. Courses in arts and humanities, natural sciences, social sciences, uh, or an elective. At, at this point, again, any credit is, is good credit. Um, if you're thinking about studying abroad in a non-English speaking country, um, generally we like to see the, about two years equivalence of uh, language studies. So if you're starting fresh in a language, fall semester, freshman year is a good time to take that, that first language, that 101 course. 
Um, so one example of how you could fill out your, your schedule with a fifth course if you want to take a fifth course. And for a major in economics, you'll see that it's virtually the same. The only course that's different, um, the management and accounting had the accounting 101. And here it's just replaced with the optional option, <laughs> optional option <laughs> from before. So again, you have the first seminar, Calc 1 or Pre-Calc, depending on where you're at with your calculus. Econ 102 or 103, the micro and macro. And as Jim mentioned, um, if you take 103 instead of 102, it's absolutely fine, although 102 is slightly preferred. And then you can round out your schedule with uh, one of your gen eds, arts and humanities, natural science, social science, et cetera. And again, you have the option of taking a fifth course, no problem if you want to stick with four for your s first semester. Um, and that's something you can speak with your advisor about, or one of us. Yes, or <laughs> one of us. Or uh, okay. Okay. Um, so bear with us. Just a couple more slides, and then we'll we'll happily welcome welcome questions. Um, so courses for minors, um, and these are courses for students. Again, looking at majors outside of the Weatherhead School, um, or outside of the business majors. Um, um, so Accounting 203 is a perfect course if you're looking and thinking about the business management minor or a specific minor in finance or marketing or, or, or accounting, for example. Accounting 203 is um, it's, it's a useful prerequisite for some other courses. So for example, finance, um, corporate finance, the intro finance course has an accounting prerequisite. Accounting 203 satisfies that prerequisite. Um, it gives you a, a, a hybrid, if you will, of the, the two courses that every business major around the country takes, so financial accounting and managerial accounting. We throw those together in a, well, the accounting faculty might like that, might not like that, <laughs> might not like that term, throwing, the, throwing them together. Um, they, they pull together the weekend before classes start. Um, a survey course covering both financial accounting and managerial, managerial accounting. Um, and then in addition to Accounting 203, another uh, very useful course is an intro economics course. 102, again, micro or 103 macro. Um, the, the beauty of uh, the economics courses is that um, they don't burn an elective. They, economics satisfies a social science requirement for probably you know, every other major at the university. Um, so you can't go wrong with, with an economics course. Um, if you're thinking about minors. Almost done. Okay, some FAQs. So you might be a little confused about Math 121 versus Math 125. Well, if you're considering engineering but kind of thinking business, then definitely go with the Math 121. We will accept it as fulfilling our calculus requirement. Even if you do 121 and 122, the Calc 1 and 2, not a problem for us. You just can't go the other way. So say you're debating engineering and business and you do Math 125. Well, if you decide to go the, the engineering route, then you'll run into a problem. Uh, AP credit for Calc 1, should I go into Calc 2? Definitely if you're thinking business, you should be perfectly fine if you have the credit for Calc 1 to go into Calc 2. Um, possibly if Calc wasn't your strongest subject, but you still tested into Calc 2, you may want to have a little refresher and repeat Calc 1 here. Um, Pre-dent, pre-med, plus a major in accounting management or econ, is that possible? Yes, it's definitely possible. This is where it's key, meeting with your advisor. So you can plan this out very carefully. I've had pre-med students in the past, and we made sure we planned out everything carefully around the MCAT, everything. So it's definitely possible, and we would be happy to help you plan that out. Double majors and dual degrees. Um, this is something that can be a little tricky. A double major is within a degree. So let's say you're doing a BA and a major in economics. Well, you can pick up a major in psychology, a major in 
sociology, <laughs> whatever it may be. Now let's say you want to do a BA in economics and a BS in accounting. Well that's considered a dual degree because you're actually getting two separate degrees. So the university requires you to do an extra number of credit hours. So it isn't as easy as just double majoring. Um, I know it gets a little complicated, but again, it's something that we can help you with, we can discuss with you, and, and see what it would take for you to get a double major or a dual degree as the BS degrees are. I don't know if I've completely Made that confusing? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's inherently confusing. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and it's not that the dual degrees are, are a rare occurrence. There's probably yeah. 50 or so students who get dual degrees every year from the university. Um, and it's a great achievement, and um, many of our students are able to do dual degrees um, in four years, even though they take about 150 credit hours. Okay, so our, our, our last CAN slide, and then uh, again, hope that there are lots of questions out there. Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier, um, we really um, welcome hearing from students and, and look forward to meeting folks in person, but in the meantime, over the summer, as you have questions leading up to registration in July and beyond that, um, Tiffany and I are available to, to consult with students, um, phone, email, um, you're more active on Gmail chat than I am. Um, Tiffany wanted to give out her cell phone for, number for texting, but I said maybe that's not such a good idea. Um, but uh, so we hope to hear from you. Um, we are also on Twitter, um, and uh, we we don't get too carried away with that. I don't I don't think we're um, too crazy. But um, and you know we will not follow you back um, unless you're in a competition to see who can get the most followers among your friends. We, I guess we could follow you if, if you request us to, but generally we, d we do not follow. Um, so we are not going to be stalking you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think Dean Mason is going to facilitate questions, uh, even though we didn't go quite as long as we thought we would. So um, I guess we're going to open it up. It's okay, Dean Hurley uh, <laughs> and Dean Welch, you guys did a great job of uh, presenting yourselves as the friendly and helpful people that you are because we, we do have lots of questions coming in, so Good. this works out really well. Um, our first question is from Taylor. Taylor wants to know, what classes do you recommend taking if you have AP credit for both Econ 102 and 103? Um, I would probably look at your your general requirements or an elective. There's um, there's really nothing else that you could take. Um, As a freshman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the again, we said we're very we're very flexible, and um, you know it's impossible to get behind. But if, if you're ahead. Um, you just got to be patient. Just you know, just even that one semester, even after taking some, even after taking accounting, first semester, that opens up some additional doors sophomore year. So I, um, I would love to steer you to you know a, a particular course in Weatherhead, um, but no specific business course to to look at taking per se. Okay, great. Um, we have a question from Mahadev. Mahadev wants to know. Um, about double majoring in finance and economics, and if that's possible, if many students do that, um, what the workload be? Excuse me, what the workload would be like, and uh, how many classes approximately might overlap between the two? Me or you? I can, I can start. Okay. Um, so this is what I was speaking about before with the dual degree versus double major. So this would be a dual degree, a BA in economics and a BS in management with a major in finance. So technically it would be the first degree, 120 credit hours for econ, plus an additional 30 credit hours. And those additional 30 are regardless of whether or not you can complete both degrees and fewer credit hours, if that makes sense. So you're looking at 150 credit hours. 
Um, and then the number of courses per semester depends on how much AP credit you come in with. Some students can do that in four years without really overloading too much. Some students would overload maybe five, six courses per semester or take summer courses to lighten some of those loads. So again, when you are considering dual degree or something along those lines, it's really a, a careful process of working with an advisor to see what you need to do to um, achieve that goal. And it's something that can be done very early, even the freshman year. So you can consider whether it's something that's realistic for you or not. Um, yeah, and I'll add a couple things. Um, and that combination of finance and economics is actually not all that uncommon. Um, we, we have probably a couple students a year or every other year or so who who have those interests and, and follow through and pursue the full dual degree. The hurdle becomes um, <clears throat> not squeezing in and satisfying all the specific requirements for the for the economics major and then also for finance. The hurdle just becomes attaining the 150 credit hours. Uh, I'm getting waved at to make sure I look at the right camera. Um, the hurdle becomes, again, the 150 credit hours. So on paper, you can satisfy the requirements for each major in about 120 some credits combined. You just need to attain the 150 credit hours. Um, what happens, what I see happening a good bit is because of the number of economics courses that students take, um, you know, finance students in particular, because there are some overlap in finance and economics courses and, and cross-listing, finance students um, might recognize that, well, gosh, if I take a couple more courses and I've got all the courses in economics that, that the econ majors take, so I'll, I'll double major in both. And then I have to explain to them, well, that's wonderful that you're interested in economics and finance, um, but by the way, it's 150 credit hours. And then most of them decide to opt for a major in one and then a minor in the other. All right, thank you very much. Um, Al wrote in with a question. He wants to know, can the classes that you take for a major uh, also count towards a Weatherhead minor? Let me jump in. Sure. Right. Um, in general, yes. So for example, if you are majoring in uh, finance and want to get a minor in accounting, um, the accounting minor consists of five courses, but you've already taken two of the courses. As a finance student, you'll take financial accounting and managerial accounting, three courses in uh, 300 level accounting courses completes the minor. So, so yes, you, you can double dip there, if you will. So, so for a Weatherhead business student, getting one of the minors outside of your major area is generally not gonna take five additional courses beyond what you've already taken. Anything to add, Tiffany? That was great. <laughs> Okay, we have another question. This one comes from Madeline. She wants to know if there are courses that are available that are geared towards international business or global economics, and also any opportunities for uh, study abroad for Weatherhead students who are interested in these types of things. Well, this is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see, one part of that, the first part, the courses geared towards international business. We don't have courses that are explicitly titled international business, except for an international economics mm -hmm. course, um, and an international finance course, also taught by the economics department. But outside of those, our faculty take more of an all-encompassing approach, um, integrating an international aspect into each course, rather than kind of a sector a separate curriculum addressing international issues. And then the second part of your question, the international opportunities or study abroad opportunities, we have cases university offers students the opportunity to study abroad for one semester, two semesters. We have exchange partners in different countries. Um, so that's more the traditional study abroad that um, you've probably heard about. And what Weatherhead also offers are short-term study abroad programs, and I actually uh, manage and attend these programs with the students. 
It's called Management 315 um, International. Oh my gosh, <laughs> International <laughs> Management <laughs> Institute. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and right now we are rotating through three locations. So this past May, I took a group of students for the first time to Shanghai, China. Um, and Tongji University is our exchange partner there. So we go there to the the um, foreign partner. We're there two weeks. There's some classes. There are cultural visits, professional visits. Um, there's free time for students to explore on their own. And so we go for two weeks. It follows spring finals. Immediately after spring finals, we leave for the two weeks so that students can return for a full summer internship because Obviously, internships are really important to our students. Um, and this gives students the opportunity to experience um, an international location, um, to have that cultural experience, the um, learning experience, but for a brief amount of time if they feel that they just can't fit uh, a semester or two semester um, study abroad into their schedule. Um, so the other two locations that we are rotating through are Frankfurt, Germany, and Rouen, France, which is in the Normandy region of France. Um, and I also mentioned that on the China program, we also went to Beijing and Xi'an. And the Frankfurt program, we also go to Berlin. And the Rouen program, we also go to Paris. Uh, and I will go back to the longer term experience quickly. Um, we have a lot of students who think, well, I can't fit it in. I don't want to get off schedule. I don't know what classes I would take. I think it'd just be too hard. But I can hardly think of a student that I've advised in the past who couldn't fit in a study abroad experience if they wanted to. Um, we can plan ahead. Again, it's meeting with your advisor to plan, 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 um, and maybe setting aside some elective courses to take while you're abroad. But again, we have flexible curriculums, curric curricula, cur curricula <laughs> sorry, and um, we try to accommodate anything that a student would like to do to enrich their learning experience. Anything else? That's good. Great, thank you. Um, Mark would like to know, how do students get internships? Um, a couple different means, um, and they, they improve their chances of getting internships and getting good internships the, the earlier they start in the process. Um, and I'm going to say something that might sound contradictory. Um, when I say early in the process, I mean if you're looking for a summer internship, don't wait until you know May to start that search. Um, it's a good thing that camera has a nice big red light on it that lights up when that's the one that I'm supposed to look into. Um, yeah, so don't start till don't wait till May to look for a summer internship. Um, but the contradictory part might be that when we say start early, if if you can get a summer internship the year after your freshman year. Um, I mean, that's pretty much a bonus. Um, it gets progressively easier to get internships. Um, some, some internships are part-time during the school year, and so many sophomores get those internships. And then summer after sophomore year, um, more internships open up um, for, for, for students, you know, true pure internships in business. So, so how do students get internships? Um, through a variety of means, um, through our university career center that hosts uh, two career fairs on campus, one each semester. Um, and, and also has um, um, a wealth of information about actual internships that might be posted by different organizations. Um, also internships, sometimes students get internships as a direct result of a referral by a faculty member or by, by one of us or by, by our office. If, if something just happens to hit us at the right moment and we think of a student and, um, that has a particular interest. Um, and through 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 contacts through networking, we we emphasize you know don't just rely on you know going to this career fair or looking through the job leads. Um, lots of my students uh, that I'll speak with in the spring when they're looking ahead to fall and scheduling for classes, and I ask them what their summer plans on. Lots of them will have um, gotten internships 
really good internships as a result of, of, of just contacts, friends and family, and, and that, that's a beautiful thing if you, if you can um, leverage those kinds of contacts. Um, anything you'd add to how yeah. students get internships? I think I would just reiterate the fact that getting to know the faculty can be such a bonus. Um, the faculty have many contacts throughout the country and the world, and especially if you're looking to target a certain area, um, building a relationship with a faculty member and then maybe reaching out for some help, um, or just being in their mind if they come across a certain opportunity. Um, we're a smaller school and you definitely have the opportunity to get to know your faculty, um, and I think most are always open to speaking with students and giving advice and providing a referral if needed. On that subject, actually, Arvind wrote in with a question about, well, essentially asking what, what kind of suggestions do you have for uh, students interacting with faculty or getting to meet faculty? How could you uh, say something about how a student might go about approaching that or what kind of opportunities Weatherhead provides for students and faculty to uh, interact? Um, I would definitely say the easiest would be um, if you have a certain faculty member as an instructor uh, going to their office hours and speaking with them um, and directly asking or setting up an appointment to speak about career options or the profession or just getting their advice. Um, and if a student isn't comfortable approaches, approaching a faculty person themselves, I've actually done kind of been the intermediary for some students um, offering to set up kind of that initial meeting or um, that kind of breaking the ice for the student and in setting up that initial meeting. I don't know if. Um, and just, I think, attending some of our, some of our programs um, that, that, we've, that we've mentioned earlier um, in, our, in our student center, the, the orientation, the, the ice cream social at the beginning of the year. It's a good time to make initial introductions. Um, but I definitely, I mean, the, the, the best place to start is with the, your instructors. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Samantha would like to know what kind of business clubs and organizations does WeatherEd have? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll name a couple and you can, you can okay, so um, there are I think about eight clubs that are either directly um, and exclusively or, or primarily WeatherEd students and there are a couple other clubs that um, have uh, just gotten off the ground the last two years and have become very, very popular, um, founded by business and economic students and also having membership from across campus. Um, so I'll, I'll plug those, uh, that, that ladder, ladder kind of club um, for starters. So we have an investment club um, that again just completed its second year and is actually at a point where they are, they are managing some of, uh, some of the money in one of the university's funds. Um, we have a, a uh, crew capital. Crew capital, right? So um, crew capital, um, um, a consulting club. I think it's just case case consulting club, uh, and for, for undergraduates. Um, so there is also one called uh, called Net Impact, um, which is um, largely about um, social entrepreneurship and and sustainability. Um, and then one of the largest clubs that we've had around for many years is Alpha Kappa Psi, um, which is a, so we have a chapter of AK Psi, which is a national professional business fraternity. Um, so it's a professional fraternity, not a social fraternity, although they do a combination of professional programs as well as social programs. Um, it's not limited to or affiliated with any specific major. Um, I think it happens that over time um, that, that Largely, finance and marketing students have gotten involved with that organization, but but some accounting students as well. Um, so it has kind of a broad focus. Um, and I'll mention one more, and then you can jump in. So the uh, economics also has um, a club, um, the Economics Society for economics majors or people just interested in economics. Uh, and then another one would be Beta Alpha Psi, and this is an honorary for accounting students. 
And if you're thinking accounting or decide accounting somewhere along the way, I definitely recommend um, becoming active in Beta Alpha Psi. It's something that employers look for, especially leadership roles within Beta Alpha Psi. Um, but there's an annual banquet, and in the fall, early in the fall, the Meet the Accountants breakfast, where several firms, I think we had possibly over 20 firms all looking for accounting students for internships and full-time positions. Um, early in the fall, it's where internships are obtained, full-time employment is obtained, and that's for members of Beta Alpha Psi. Um, and then there's also a Wolstein Society, which is our, our senior honorary society. Um, I think I think that's the bulk of the, mm -hmm. the most active clubs. There's a marketing club also. Great, thank you. Uh, Jasmine would like to know if the classes are more lecture style or more small interactive type courses. They need more Tiffany. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'd say there's a good mix. Um, definitely some of your introductory courses, your micro, macroeconomics, uh, financial managerial accounting. There's a lot of nuts and bolts in those courses, so a lot of lecture material has to be presented. But definitely as you move away from those introductory courses, you're going to get into some possibly very small, but I'd say on average, our classes typically are around 40 students, if not smaller, maybe a little larger in the intro courses, but um, once you're out of those intro courses, a lot of discussion, seminar-based, case studies, interaction, group projects, so um, definitely not sitting in a lecture hall taking notes the whole time. Anything to add? We're good. Okay, uh, Deanna would like to know if I'm interested in finance and accounting, at what point would I have to decide between the two if I knew I was only going to do one of them? That's all you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that one's hard to say because One could always be a minor, and the other courses could drop into your electives. I want to say junior year, but I think you could possibly push it to your fourth year, depending on if you would want to do. We also have a Master of Accountancy program, so that could play into it. But it's it's very late in in your your studies. Yeah, I, I think, but that by the time you're probably even in a sophomore year, going into junior year, you, you'll, you will have taken enough of yeah. um, enough classes in each area if you're still exploring that you, 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 know, you, you can decide sooner if you want. You know, the accounting you know, courses are ones where, again, there's more sequencing of mm -hmm. courses. Um, what, 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 what you run into the danger of, I guess, is that you know, the, the longer you go without choosing one, and the more that you need to be taking classes in both areas, um, especially in accounting, to, to be on track. Um, but I think that probably by the time you take that, you know, that second or third course in accounting or finance beyond the intro level, I think you'll have an indication. And um, then, sorry. No, um, I was just going to. And again, there's always the the major in one and minor in the mm -hmm. other path. And most students will start leaning one way or the other so that they can focus their internship pursuits a little more um, exact and even get the uh, wheels moving on the career pursuits even early on. So, But definitely the internship would be the, the first step. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, Jen would like to know if there are any uh, classes or other types of learning opportunities available for students who are interested in going to law school after uh, completing their undergraduate in either management or accounting? Um, we have a, a couple courses at the university that have kind of a, a law flavor to them. Um, so the business law course that is required for accounting majors only, 
Um, we'll also get some um, finance and marketing and economic students taking the course um, if they have an eye towards a, a, a career in law and studies in law. Um, in other departments at the university, I think in political science, there may be here and there some different electives that are related to, to law. Um, but for the most part, you know, getting into law school and starting a career in law is about um, your, your GPA and your score on the LSAT and taking classes that are, that are going to make you write a lot and prepare you for the LSAT. Um, other than that, I, can you think of any other? International trade, maybe. I guess it depends on the type of law. Right. Um, some students who might be interested in tax, tax law, there's tax course in the accounting department. I've had a couple undergraduates in recent years take an elective at the law school call, uh, on health law, which is actually cross-listed as a law course along with a um, health systems management center course at, at the Weatherhead School. Um, but it is largely a course taken by second and third year law schools, and we have had undergrads take that course. It, it's been among the toughest courses that, that, that they've reported ever taking. Um, but it's, it's a great experience for someone who's who's really interested in law. Thank you. Uh, Jason wrote in, he said, uh, you mentioned the Master of Accountancy program. What would a student have to do to prepare for that as an undergraduate? Well, there are several ways that a student can go about doing the Master of Accountancy program. Um, we have an integrated option, and this allows students to take graduate courses as an undergraduate student. Students can double count two graduate courses towards their bachelor's and their master's. So I would say the most common path is for students to take four and a half years, so four years in one semester, and they can get their BS in accounting and their master of accountancy. Um, some students choose to do it in five years, so four for the BS and one for the master's. And some students, if they come in with a lot of AP or they really overload and take some summer courses, they can do it in four years and get their bachelor's and their master's. Um, it is a separate application process. Um, there are certain um, items that are waived for our own undergraduate students. Um, and for those of you out there who may already be interested in counting and know about the 150 credit hour rule for sitting for the CPA exam, this would meet that requirement because the BS in accounting is 122 hours. The master is 36 hours, but since two courses can double count, it takes it down to 30 hours and you're looking at 150 credit hours. That was a lot. <laughs> but um, so. It's definitely an option that our BS and accounting students should all be thinking of. Um, if they want to become a CPA, take the CPA exam and get their license, which is definitely encouraged. And I work with all of our undergraduate accounting students and usually put together a plan for every student so they can see what it would take for them to get the bachelor's and the master's. You know, how many courses will they have to take per semester? Would they have to take summer courses? You're, you're being modest about your individualized spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> I do make spreadsheets for everyone, so I guess I've become a little notorious for my spreadsheets. But um, because students want to see what, what's it going to take, how many courses do I have to take, do I have to go in the summer, so it's very individualized. But I will say most commonly four and a half to do both. All right. Uh, <laughs> Levi writes in and he wants to know, or he, he actually writes, I'm sorry. I am not sure if I want to major in finance or marketing. What do you suggest I take in the first semester? I'll jump in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so first semester, again, the, there, there are no implications as far as um, you know, that depend on whether you're going to go the finance or, or marketing route. Um, so we re revert back to you know, the, the overall schedule for someone who might be looking at anything in business, accounting, finance, or marketing. Again, microeconomics or macroeconomics, financial accounting, um, rounding up, taking your calculus, your first seminar, maybe a, a general education requirement. Um, 
what happens mostly is in sophomore year, for students who have come in the front door as freshmen knowing that they're going to study something in business and they get on track with economics courses and, and the accounting courses, then what that does is open up the door sophomore year um, for students to take um, that intro course in corporate finance um, and or that you know, intro course on marketing, take, take both of them fall semester or take one in the fall, one in the spring. Um, again, we, we are we're pushing down opportunities like that for students to take business courses earlier than students do at a lot of different courses, or I'm sorry, at a lot of different colleges. So take advantage of those opportunities. Um, but I, I think my best advice is to, you know, keep an open mind and start exploring during freshman year um, with an eye towards um, courses in sophomore year that are specific to finance and marketing um, and also keeping in mind that um, another course that is required um, for finance and marketing students management 201 um, would be a viable option in second semester of freshman year um, I think we'll have two sections next spring um, maybe just so. two, two sections and that course is designed to give students a broad overview of business and um, a look, a closer look at some different disciplines. Great, thanks. Uh, Jay wants to know what kind of network opportunities, networking opportunities, I should say, are there in the uh, greater Cleveland area? Are we stumped? Are you stumped? <laughs> Well I, well, I was going to immediately go to the our student clubs. They bring in a lot of local firms. They bring in we bring in alumni. The student groups bring in alumni, and these are amazing networking opportunities. I our alums are great. They're in wonderful places, and they're always wanting to help out their fellow case um, colleagues. Um, but as far as outside of the university, um, I know there's the 2030 group, but I think that may be for a little older crowd. Mm -hmm. um, can you think of any? Um, and I, I think that many of the local chapters um, of different professional organizations for, 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 for different fields will have student memberships. And I think if a student really wants to stand out, then he or she sh could participate in those and probably be among a small number of students mm -hmm. who would be involved in, you know, there's an organization called SHRM, S-H-R-M, the Society for Human Resources Managers, I believe. So if you're interested in HR, um, yeah, go, go to one of those chapter meetings and um, the professionals there would probably love to, to, to talk to a, a young and eager student. Um, but, but I do think that, that yeah, on cam the networking opportunities that are available um, to start on campus that can then that can branch out and lead you off campus. Um, I think, I think that's, that, that's the place to start. I think we probably have more opportunities um, and fewer students involved in the ones on campus than, than we would like to. Um, one other thing, the University Career Center can facilitate um, contacts with alumni in different fields. And I was just going to say that, you know, as college students, we try to bring those opportunities to you to network here on campus. And there's also the Ohio Society of CPAs. They have a, a student group that um, for future CPAs. Okay, great. Uh, Teresa wants to know if she has AB credit for STAT 201 and does she still mm -hmm. have to take Opry 207? Uh, the simple answer is is no. So all, cre all AP STATS credit will come in or transfer credit will, will, will come into the university and generally be designated STAT 201. Um, but we'll, we will accept that for Opry 207. Great, and uh, Jack wants to know, are there any uh, courses or other opportunities for students who are interested in sports management? <laughs> uh, we do have uh, an upper level seminar that is focused on sports management, and there is a university seminar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Focused on sports management. 
and that's taught by, um, I believe, the executive director of the uh, the NFL um, Hall of Fame in Canton. Yep, so a couple things here and there. Great. And uh, Elizabeth was wondering if there's a type of uh, management or area of business that isn't offered as a major, are there opportunities to uh, create your own plan of study within Weatherhead? Good question. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, um, there are such opportunities, and we'll, we can give you some specific examples. Um, because many students are interested in business, but they have other interests that don't necessarily correlate to accounting, finance, or marketing, um, which, is, which is why she asked the question. I'm sorry, red light. Um, so I say, so I can count on one hand the number of students um, each year who will graduate. Um, having created their own major within WeatherEd. So we call it a Dean's Approved Major and there's a process that students need to go through to, to pull together a coherent set of courses that um, might nicely comprise um, what we, we would consider to be a major in, um, in, in something relevant to business. Um, earlier I mentioned that I've had a couple undergraduates take a course in, uh, in health law and in fact the students who have gone, who have taken that course have done so um, because of their interest in um, in, in, uh, in healthcare management, so they have used that course as one of their foundation courses for this dean's approved major um, in in what they would call healthcare management. Um, last year, one of our top seniors graduated um, with a um, specialization in nonprofit management. Um, so her set of courses that comprise that Dean's Approved major um, came from some undergraduate courses at the university that had a nonprofit flavor to them as well as some graduate courses um, through the Mandel Center for Nonprofit Organizations. Um, and I'll digress for a minute and, and, and generalize and, and point out that we have, um, it, it's not unusual for undergraduates and certainly not undergraduates at Weatherhead uh, or certainly including undergraduates at Weatherhead, to take graduate courses as electives, whether they're part of some formal kind of program of study or not. Um, so that's a great opportunity for students. Mm -hmm. Do you want to fill in some of the other examples of Dean's um, Approved majors we've had recently? I've had quite a few students, quite a few, I shouldn't say <laughs> quite a few. A handful of students do sort of a human resources major. Um, you had a sustainability? Sustainability. sustainability. Mm -hmm. Um, healthcare finance, right? Good, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think I can think of any others. Um, that I mean, that, yeah. yeah, that covers the range. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. and as Jim mentioned, the opportunity to take graduate courses, um, I think that is definitely a bonus of Weatherhead. We have some finance students who may have a specific interest, and we don't have the undergraduate elective. Well, they can speak with their instructors who may be teaching that graduate course, say in derivatives or, or mergers and acquisitions, and they can get permission from that instructor to take the graduate course. So definitely opens up many doors for the students for different experiences. And, and oftentimes, um, one student will blaze, the, will blaze the trail and then other students um, will, will follow. So um, the student who, who the first student who completed a program in, in healthcare finance um, was followed quickly by, you know, a, a student a year behind her who um, was a pre-med student and bound for medical school and started to talk with me about his interest, maybe long term, and in getting into healthcare management and asking, you know, that 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 question, you know, is there something else I can do here other than accounting, finance, or marketing? And all I had to do was point to um, what this prior student had done and. Um, he pretty much followed the, you know, the same path. And it's not impossible to do. It just takes a little initiative on mm -hmm. the student's part and then working with your advisor and a faculty member. Okay, uh, Sung wants to know if uh, faculty and Weatherhead do research, and if so, is it possible for students to get involved with research? I would say it's most common within economics to have undergrads help with research. Um, there are opportunities for students who 
may have specific research interests to actually approach a faculty member about advising their research and then getting credit. Um, we have a course where we have independent studies in every subject area and eventually a senior capstone can be an independent research project. So I think it typically, would you say, within finance, accounting, marketing, it's more so if the student has the interest, but in economics there are a lot of students who work with faculty on research. Okay, Austin wants to know if I have a five on the AP Calc BC exam and have credit for math 121 and 122, do I need to take additional calculus courses for a management or accounting degree? No. Um, so the 121-22 sequence um, is perfectly acceptable for our calculus one and two requirement. Um, so then you would want to look at, um, if you wanted to, then for a semester you could take uh, OPRE, OPRE 207, the uh, the Intro Business Statistics course, or you know, other options. Okay, we have about uh, four minutes left in the broadcast, so we uh, will be wrapping up with our last question of the night. Um, Jonathan wanted to know, could you give some examples of some companies that recent graduates have gotten jobs at? You want to start? Okay. Um, again, I work mainly with the accounting students. So we have students go with all the big four, big four, <laughs> <laughs> all big four, um, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, KPMG. But then we have a lot of local and regional firms. Um, we have students who go elsewhere in the country. Uh, and also students who maybe go into more of a corporate role or a bank. We have students that go to Key Bank into one of their financial uh, rotational programs, uh, Cleveland Clinic. So there's a wide variety for our accounting. But I'd say most common is to go with one of the big four. Um, and some other examples that, that come to mind um, from recent years, um, you know, whether they're training programs, or rotational training programs, or analyst kinds of positions in um, you know, large or small companies. Um, Avery Dennison, um, which probably isn't a household name, but they're a Fortune 500 company that, 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 that we've all probably used their products. Um, American Greetings, um, Sherwin-Williams, Eaton, uh, Capital One, um, and, and, and then in, in addition, I think, along with accounting firms, you, did you mention banks, and did you mention consulting firms? I mean, those are probably the industries that our graduates um, often go into immediately, along with the rest of the universe of, again, analyst and training programs um, with large companies, as well as small companies and nonprofits, and um, it seems like the last year or two in particular, a couple students a year are very entrepreneurial and are going with startups, um, if not starting up their own company. Okay, well thank you very much, uh, Jim and Tiffany, for a very informative presentation. We'd like to thank all of you who watched for tuning in this evening. And just to let you know that uh, we will have some webinars and online information sessions coming up uh, throughout the coming weeks. Uh, we'll finish up uh, this week with uh, weather, excuse me, Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing on Wednesday and the Case School of Engineering on Thursday and Friday. Uh, Arts and Sciences the following week. And then heading into registration in early and mid-July, we'll have some additional webinars hosted by the Office of Undergraduate Studies. So thanks again for tuning in and have a great evening.